Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to Lakeside. Um, nothing to do with Christmas this time, um, but uh, what I have got in front of me is a Hornby Network Rail shunter, um, which I'm going to DCC. Um, so at the moment it's obviously analogue. Uh, this was a free gift from Hornby from uh, joining the Hornby Club and I put it in a box well I didn't put it in a box it was in a box already um, and uh, I just shoved it underneath the layout to be honest with you because I thought well I'll get round to putting a chip in it sometime as it happened yesterday um, Monday I watched a video of Gary over at Cheeky Tech and lo and behold he had exactly the same loco which he had weathered, sprayed, etc. And he put a DCC chip in it. And I thought, oh, I've got that. I'll, um, that's given me inspiration, so thank you, Gary. Uh, it's given me inspiration to get this out and put a chip in it. Um, so I've had this a few months now, um, so really it's overdue. So today, um, I shall be stripping the analog stuff out and converting it over to DCC. I should be doing it slightly different to Gary in that um, he hardwired a decoder straight in, um, which is kind of what I should be doing, but with a slight difference in that I should be using a, if you can see that, an eight pin adapter. So I should be wiring these in um, and um, the chip will actually just insert into the pins here. Um, so that is really what I've got to do. So I've got everything in place. I've got some um, colour cable here which matches in with these colour cables, the uh, red and black, orange and grey. So I'll just extend these cables to give me a bit more room to play with. Um, and then I can wire this up to this and then mount it in the front and that should be job done um, so let's see how it goes okay so first thing is to extend the wires on this right so I'll be back shortly right back again everyone um, and uh, two things firstly Apologies for any noises you hear, which will be from the dishwasher <laughs> and Ruby, who seems to be having a fit at the moment. Um, so try and ignore that if you can. I am. Um, so what I've done is I've extended the cables uh, for the plug um, so that I've got plenty of cable to work with um, to solder onto the motor and onto the pickups. So the first thing I need to do, and that's the decoder by the way, um, so it's just a um, straightforward Hatton's, Hatton's decoder, which I found in my box, which I hope still works, it should do. Um, so we'll see anyway. Um, put that to one side, along with the body. So the first thing I need to do is to strip out all this old analog uh, wiring on here, which includes the capacitor. Um, so I just need to unsolder all this. So all I've got left are two wires from the two pickups and two solder joints here for the terminals for the motor. So that's all I'm after at the moment. Okay, so let's crack on with that. So the first thing I need to do is determine what is soldered where. It's primarily all onto the motor by the looks of it. So let's take that one off to begin with. Now what I've found is that if you find that the soldering iron doesn't melt the existing solder, which it has done, straight away, I found if you put a blob of solder on the soldering iron that really quickens up the process. So that's one of the pickups off. The other pickup goes to this terminal here. So let's try and get this off. It's 
melted the solder, but it's firmly on the terminal of the motor. So I think what I might do is I might just snip that to give me a bit more chance. feels brutal doing this but it's the only way you can do it. Okay, that's better. See if we can release that bit first. Good. So that's the little TV suppressor taken care of. So we can throw that. We don't need that. And we just now need to clean that solder up on that terminal. What I'm trying to do is get the hole appearing and get rid of all this solder. Whether I should be successful or not, I don't know, but if not, then I can just solder the wire straight into that terminal. And I think there is so much solder on there, I'm not going to reveal that hole. Okay, so the next thing is take this one off. Okay, that's one bit. There we go. <laughs> okay. So now I have everything clear, um, so I've now got two wires coming out for the left and right hand pickup. So now I need to cut that off. And to make it neat, we'll cut that one back to the same length. Just trim these back. And tin them.
Okay. Now we're virtually ready to install this. So the first things I will do will be to uh, do the pickups, which is the red and black. And I'm going to position, this is the front of the loco here. Um, so Gary mounted his on the motor here. Um, I'm going to mount this um, this here, I'm going to mount at the front of the loco. It's got a sticky back pad on the bottom, um, so I just need to pop that down there, allowing enough room here for the decoder to fit. And to allow also the body to clip into these two holes. So I think what I will do, I will mount that now to stop it moving around. So peel back the green paper and press it into position. And that's reasonably firm. So here's a, a black wire, which is a pickup wire. So I can now trim that and solder it to this side. So we're going to lightly trim it, uh, tin it. What I haven't got out is some more um, heat shrink. So bear with me and I will get that and I'll come back. Okay, right, I've cut off four bits of heat shrink. So all I need to do now is to solder solder this cable onto the pickup, the black to the pickup. heat shrink down and with your iron just shrink it so that's one out of the four so the next one will be the red cable for the other pickup so exactly the same process in the end of this bit of heat shrink
solder those two together. shrink down and shrink it. So that's the two pickups. Now all I have to do is to solder. Which way around is this going to go? I think it's that way. I think it's that way. If not, we can change the direction on the controller. So this time we don't need any heat shrink. This is going to be soldered directly to the motor terminal. So this is the orange. That's the orange. And the last one is the grey, exactly the same, so this can come around here. And there we go. So that is now all four cables now soldered. So we have the orange and grey to the motor and the red and black to the pickups. I think naturally it tends to go that way. Sorry, that's the dishwasher emptying. decoder in, making sure it's the right way around, and the one is there, so it goes that way around, that should be now DC seed. Obviously I'm going to have to code that in. Um, it's probably on three at the moment um, so I need to have to get my controller out and uh, pop it on the programming track and code it in. Hopefully it will work. Um, so that's it. Um, I will get the... I'll probably get this up onto the... Um, no I won't. I'll bring the controller down here I think. Uh, that's where the programming track is. Um, so the next part will be getting this to run, hopefully, on the programming track. Okay? So, bye for now, and speak to you later. Bye. Hello again, everyone. Right, so rolling road is in position now um, with the uh, DCC Concepts uh, rollers. Body is back on the chassis. I've programmed this into my... Um, ECOS this time rather than my Z21 
um, I find the ECOS a little bit better for programming um, than the Z21. But that's a personal thing. It's not. I'm not saying one's better than the other one. It's just a personal thing for me. Um, so to get the ball rolling with regards to the initial setup of the uh, loco, I tend to use the ECOS. After that, the Z21 is fine. So, does it work? Yes, it does. So that was a very, very simple um, process to DCC a analog loco. Um, and it's, to be honest with you, any locos are virtually identical in the setup. Um, as long as you follow the rules, then um, it's quite an easy process. The only ones I don't tend to DCC these days are the older um, tender driven Hornby locos um, and any of the locos which have got the um, what I call the pancake motors inside them. Um, they tend to draw quite a load on those motors. So I tend to use um, my uh, not used, but I tend to DCC locos which are a little bit newer than that with the more modern type motors. But yeah, it's um, that's going to go nicely. It's never going to go a million miles an hour. This thing, I never did in real life, so I'm not too bothered about the speed. But it does, although a bit noisy, it does rattle along. But what I'm after on this particular loco is the slow running. Now, again, it's not going to be brilliant because of the motor itself. But, having said that, I'm knocking this down to four speed steps. Nothing wrong with that. I did run this in on DC before I started any of this. Um, which I would advise anybody to do. If you read the instructions on any locos, it, it says it wouldn't have done on this one, obviously, because it was never DCC. But it does say that if you get a DCC loco, to run it in on analog first, just to make sure everything is working and that you know that it's not a decoder problem. If everything works on DC, then it should work on DCC in theory. But if you look at that, that's running really nice and slowly. Let's just see how slow it will go before it stops. So that's down to three. Let's take it down to two. It's going to stop in a minute. And it, yeah, it's hesitating a bit now on two speed steps, but that's okay. Right back up to three now. So I'm happy with that, that's been a successful conversion and I can now run this on Lakeside. Um, next job really is to now weather this so that it looks a little bit less plasticky and a bit more used. Okay, so that's all for now and uh, I hope you found this of interest and uh, that's about it. Okay, so bye for now and um, don't forget to have a look at Gary's um, video because he talks about more than just doing this he talks about his layout as well and um, it's a, a very very good video okay so pop over to his channel and um, I'll put a link in the description okay so bye for now bye